Hi students, hope everyone is fine and safe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to my new video. And today's video is about another interesting topic in 8051 microcontroller. We're going to see timer programming in mode 2 operation. So far we have seen the basics about timers, the different modes of operation about timers, how to program timers, how to program timer in mode 1 operation. But in this video, we're going to see how we're going to program the timer for mode 2 operation, right? So before watching this video, I would recommend you people to go through the basics about timers, TMOD, TCON register, how to program a timers, how to find out the count values, all those basic information from my previous video so that you can understand this particular video very easily, right? So before starting this video, I'll just refresh the mode 2 operation again, right? So in mode 2 operation, uh, we are going to use only an 8-bit register. In mode 1, we will have uh, the complete 16-bit registers. That is, we will uh, use both TH and TL register. But in mode 2, we will use only TL register for uh, the count purpose, right? And... Another important thing is this mode 2 operation is also called as auto reload mode, right? Whereas in time mode 1 operation, what we have to do is for every operation, we have to reload uh, the TH and TL values, right? And then only we have to start the timer and then we have to execute the programs. But in mode 2, what will happen is we don't want to reload uh, the TH or TL again and again. It will be automatically reload whenever there is an interrupt has happened. Right. So now we'll see what mode two operation does. Right. I know that we use uh, in mode two it will act as a timer. Right. And we'll use an internal uh, oscillator, and we know that C by T value will be zero. So we'll use TR bit. That is, we'll use internal oscillator. So we'll get an internal oscillator signal here, and we'll use either TR zero and TR one. You know that when we'll use TR zero and when we'll use TR one. Right. If timer 0 is used, it will be TR0. And if it is timer 1, it will be TR1. Right. And now for every every clock pulse, for every clock pulse, what will happen is uh, the TL value will increase. Right. So you know that the TL value starts from 0, 0. And then it will continue. For every clock pulse, it will increase the uh, count value. And it continues until it reaches the FFF. Right. And once it reaches the FFF, it will roll back to zero again. And while it is rolling back here, understand one particular thing. Normally, what we'll do is whenever there is a rollback, it will enable the TF flag, right? But here, what happens here is we have TL register and TH register, right? So for every clock cycle, only the TL register will be increasing, right? Initially, you know that when whenever we program a timer, we will be setting the value of TH0 and TL0. Only from then, the count value will increase. Correct? Right. So, initially, uh, we feed some value. Say, for example, we feed a value of 9 here and 9 here. Right? So, the count will start from 9 from TL value. Right? And then, till it reaches the FF, it continues. Right? And once the roll-off happens, what happens is the TF flag will be enabled. Right? And the automatic reload will happen because the TH value will be remaining with 9 itself. It is already loaded with 9, right? Now, once this TF flag is enabled, this TH will be automatically reloaded to TL value. So, once again, the TL value will become 9. So, it will automatically reload it and the TF flag will be automatically reset and the next operation will continue, right? And that is why mode 2 operation is called as auto reload mode. Right. So now we'll see how to program the mode two. Right. So I have already explained uh, the basic information about how to program the timer. Right? Uh, I'll just refresh the basics again because in order to program the timer, right, we know that we have to configure T mod register, T con register, and also we have to feed the count value. Right. We have. Four or five steps, which is very important. The first thing is you have to configure the T mod register in which mode we have to work. And then we have to configure T con register to check which timer we're going to use. Then, then we have to 
uh, feed the th and tl value right what is, you know that what is th and tl value that is where uh, the timer overflow will have like only if those registers uh, reaches the maximum value the timer flow overflow flag will happen right so then we, what we have to do is we have to feed th value and tl value and then we have to start the timer and then once the timer reaches the maximum value it has to enable the tf flag and once the tf flag is enabled we have to stop the timer and once again what we have to do is we have to do the same operation to generate the square wave so all these operations which we have already discussed right but i'll just refresh this basics again here first thing is we know that what is t mod register and what is t count register in t mod register you know that this is timer 0 and timer 1 right and probably in every every program we, we normally select only mode 1 operation that is because uh, we can able to create maximum number of delays right and we know that if it is mode 1 we have to make this as 0 1 right this bit 0 1 right and if it is we are going to use timer 0 what we have to do we have to we have to select this particular bit right so it is 0 0 0 0 0 0 right so now what is this we have configured t mod register for mode 1 operation right that is we are going to use timer 0 so we are choosing this one if we, if we are going to use timer 1 what we have to do we have to change this bit right this will be 0 and this will be 1 we already seen this correct and also if you are using timer 0 then what we have to do then tr bit right remember i have said here this is the tr bit right and uh, now we have configured this one now we have to what we have to do is we have to uh, make this tr 0 right we have to enable this tr 0 because we are selecting timer 0 so this bit will be 1 and everything all other will be 0 now what we have done we have configured t count register and as well as t mod register Remember, remember one thing to configure decon register right right here what we have to do is we have to just feed this information 0 0 0 0 0 0 0, zero right so if you see the previous video we have generated a square wave uh, by just feeding this information uh, immediately to the decon register so the decon register will be configured for this particular timer 0 right we can also do this by this way or what we can do is we can just set we have to just do we have to enable this only one bit right so what we can do is we can directly give an instruction also set b tr0 we can do that right so we can also do in that way also right so this is very important to configure it and as soon as you configure this timer uh the, this timer register what we have to do is we have to give the count value right so we know that how to find out the count value right uh, this is the formula which we have discussed right count is equal to fffh minus value plus 1 right so if like now if it is a normal count program where we, there will be a count value so that we can directly subtract that and then we will find out the exact count right but for a square wave or in to generate any particular waves here what we will do is we will go to this basic we know that say for example we are using a crystal oscillator frequency of 11.0592 right how will you find out the timer clock frequency all we have to do is we have to divide this by 12 right that is what we normally do timer's clock frequency so 11.0592 divided by 12 we will get this value and if you want to find out the time period one divided by this value so that you will get this 1.085 right so now what we obtain is we will obtain the the clock time period the complete time period right now but what we have to know is we have to know this value to find out the clock. So how will you do it? Now what we will do is uh, say for example if you are going to generate a square wave, right? A square wave for every 0 0.5 microseconds, 5, 0 0.5 milliseconds, right? So now what we have to do is we need to find out uh, the count value, right? So how will you find the count value? We know that this is the total time period, but we need 0 0.5 milliseconds right so for so 0 0.5 divided by this value right 1.085 so that you will get one particular value here right some hexadecimal value right so now what we have to do is that value we have to subtract here so that we will obtain the count 
So after obtaining the count, what we can do is we can obtain what is TH0 and what is TL0. For example, you can see here if the count value is 9, right? So uh, what you can do is FFFF minus 9 plus 1, we will get this particular value where this is TH register value FF and F7 will be TL0 value. Clear? All these are very basics. So what we have done is we have done TMOD register, we have configured TMOD register, we have configured TCON register and also we have obtained the TH value and TL value. And all we have to do now is we have to feed this information to the timer and we have to start the timer. Right? And if this value is given, right, for every clock cycle what will happen is <coughs> it will increase the count value. And until it reaches the maximum value, right, it will continue. And after reaching the maximum value, it will enable the interrupt, right? So that we will be able to generate the square wave, right? So that is what we are going to see in program now. To configure mode 2, we have to do the same operation. The only thing here is we are using a 8-bit timer. What are the operations we will use? The first thing is we have to select the uh, T mod. Right, that is we have to select timer 0 or timer 1 and then what we have to do is we have to find out the count value so that we can feed TH and TL, right? And then what we have to do is we have to start the timer, right? And then what we have to do is we have to monitor, right? What is the monitor? We have to use the, uh, we have to continuously monitor the TF flag until this operation TF becomes 1, we have to monitor, right? Once the TF flag becomes 1, what we have to do is we have to stop the timer. We have to stop the timer. Once the time timer is stopped, we have to reset the TF0 and then once again the uh, TH and TF value will be reloaded and then the operation continues. This is the normal operation, correct? The same steps for mode 2. The only difference here is we will, we will not be needed to reload the TH or TL value because it will be automatically reloaded, right? So you can see here it is an 8-bit timer. Right, so we will have only T TH TL value, right? So uh, it starts from 00, zero and for every clock pulse from 00, zero, it will uh, increase to FFH, right? And then the TH value is also will be the same value which loaded in the TL, and that is why you can see here uh, in this particular thing, whatever value which is given to TL, the same value will be given to TH, right? Uh, that is, we will. We will load the value only in TH. That value, that, that particular count will be given as a copy to TL. Right? So it's not about giving the value to TL. The first thing is they will load the TH value and that copy will be given to TL. Right? And then we have to start the timer. We know that how to start the timer. Either you will use set, the set B TR0 or uh, set B TR1. Right? And once the timer starts, what we have to do is we have to continuously monitor, right? That, that is the TL uh, flag, it will start increasing, right? It will increasing from 00 to FFH. Once it reaches FFH, what will happen? The TF flag will be set to 1, right? Uh, that is the reload will happen. And now the only difference here uh, in mode 2 is once it reset, the value in TH, that is whenever there is a rollback, Whenever there is a TF valve becomes 1, what will happen is this TH will be reloaded, right? Reloaded here and this will be reset, right? And this process will be repeated again and again, right? That is why it is called as auto reload mode, right? So this is the process for configuring uh, the timer in mode 2, right? So you can see here the same value that is the same steps, T mod register, we will have to choose T0, timer 0, timer 1, load the TH value, start the timer and you know this condition what this will do, right? It will it will continue to loop in the same same location until this TF flag becomes 1. Once this is becomes 1, it will come down, it will go to the next instruction, right? So once this TF flag becomes 1, what we have to do is we have to stop the timer and then this TF flag will be reset to 0 and only one difference here is it is an auto reload mode so the load the count will be automatically reloaded in timer in the th tl value right in mode 2 operation right so here i'm not going to explain a program here what we can do is we uh, we have already generated the square wave here uh, they have made a, a a particular program here to find out the uh, 
frequency, right? What uh, the frequency of a square wave, right? We need to find out uh, the frequency of the square wave generated by this particular program. So now you can see here uh, the frequency, the oscillator frequency they have given us 11.0592, uh, right? And now what we have to do is we need to find out the count value exactly, right? So that uh, if we can able to find out the count value, what we will do is we know the normal steps. This is what we are going to find out is we are going to do it in inverse thing. But uh, normally what we have to do is uh, we will find out the count value, correct? What? How will you find out the count value? First, you will divide this by 12. So you will be obtaining a value of 9 point something, 6 to something just for an example. And then you will find out the time period, right? So it will be 1.085, something like that, right? And now what will happen is if you are going to use a square wave, right? Uh, for uh, 0 0.5 millisecond, we will find out the count value. So we will divide 0 0.5 by 1.085, right? And then you will find out the value. And then once again, you have to find out the count value like that. Now what we have to do is we need to find out the frequency. So we have to do all this operation inversely, right? So... Uh, we can see here move T mod 20 H. You know what is 20 H? It's nothing but we are setting the uh, T mod register to mode 2, right? So mode 2, we are going to set that by uh, configuring uh, this particular value to T mod register. And similarly, what we are doing is we are uh, giving this value, TH value as 5, right? So we're going to they have already given th value as 5 so from this we need to find out the count value to find out the frequency right so you can see this is the normal step the timer one they have used a timer one and then it is continued and then uh, the, this in this particular pin the square wave is generated now the question is we need to find out the square wave generated at this particular pin all right so this is the normal steps to generate the square wave now how will you find out the frequency we know that uh, to find out the count value here, they've given 5, right? 5. And we are using T mod register, that is uh, mode 2 operation, mode 2 operation. So, uh, it will be only 8 bit. So, totally, there will be 256 delays, correct? Right. So, now, how will you find out the uh, complete time period, right? So, here, what we will do is we will find out the complete time period just by 0 0.5 divided by 1.085. So you'll find out the complete time period, right? See, uh, you will find out the time period for one particular clock, right? So here, what we have to do is we have to first subtract this value. You can see here uh, the given value is 5. So what we are doing is 256 minus 5. So what we will do is we will obtain 251, right? And we know that we are using 11.0592. And you know that the complete time period, the complete time period is 1.085, right? How will you obtain that? We have to obtain this value divided by 12 so that you will obtain this uh, 9.62. And then we will divide 1 by T. So you will obtain the complete time period, correct? So after complete time period for one clock cycle, for one time, for one particular uh, positive cycle, if we say it is 0 0.5, then what we will do is 0 0.5 divided by 1.085, right? So now you can see here, it is 251. So if we can able to multiply this uh, 1.085, we can able to get the time period of one particular, one particular pulse, right? You can see here, 251 into 1.085, we'll obtain 272, right? So it, it is general, normally what we will do is we'll use 50 percent that is uh, the same right a uh, 50 percent duty cycle which will be the t on will be same and t off will be same so we have obtained uh, 272.33 microseconds for one cycle so uh, for one particular positive pulse so uh, there will be another pulse so what we have to do is we have to multiply by two so that we can obtain the complete time period right uh, for a one complete cycle so it will be 2 into 272.33 so you'll obtain this particular value and this uh, from this we can able to obtain the frequency that is 1 divided by 550, 544.67 will give you the frequency, right? So the problem can be asked in any types either to generate uh, a square wave in a particular pen or to find out the frequency. 
So to find out the frequency, whatever we do normally to generate a square wave, we have to do that inversely, right? So if it is uh, the same process for all the modes of operation, right? Even if it is mode one, uh, you got to do the same thing. The only thing is this value will be different, correct? Right? So today what we have seen is we have seen how to configure timer in mode two operation, right? And we have seen one particular problem to determine the frequency of the square wave, right? So I believe this video will be very useful for you. Thank you, my dear students.